Let's take these two on wood from the beginning stages to the end with the final mark making. Okay, let's get started. Hello and welcome. If you love abstract art and the creative process, you are in the right place. I'll talk you through my steps and throw in some stories about being an abstract artist and running an art business. My name is Betty Franks and I'm super happy you're here. All right, I already kind of dived right into showing you what I'm working on here. And those Joe's, um, Joe's panel that I showed you, these are not Joe's. I thought they were, but they're not because Joe's was deeper. It was two inches and these are one and a half inch, which is still substantial um, one and a half inches on the side. So I love painting on the sides and you'll see me do that throughout the process today. I love starting with mark making. It's just my way of loosening up, of obliterating that white that is staring back at me and just giving me an opportunity to start moving my hands around and getting in the motion of creating. I like to use a variety of different mark making tools. And so here I was using, uh, I started off with a pencil and then I did some crayons and I did some, I think Neo Color was in there too. If you want, I've got underneath this video a list of my favorite art supplies, or just leave me a message down below. I'm happy to send you that link if you want to check those out. I'm starting off here with black paint. I'm using Nova Color Paints. If you've been following me for a while, thank you, thank you, and welcome back. If you are new to my channel, then you're going to quickly learn that I absolutely love Nova Color Paints. I've been using them since I want to say 2015. So it's been a while and it's one of those paints that you can't find in your local art store. So you really find out about it from other artists and that's how I discovered it. I went to a painting workshop and other artists were using Nova Color and I was had an opportunity to try it and I fell in love with the paint immediately. Really love the pigmentation, the viscosity of it, the price of it is fantastic. And I've been using them ever since. And for a number of years, I've been talking about them, advertising for them. And then a couple of years ago, they finally created an affiliate program. And so I am an affiliate for them. Always happy to talk about them because I only use Nova Color Paints. I truly believe that they are uh, an exceptional paint. And so if you are interested, I have a bundle called Betty's Bundle. And it's 15 of my go-to colors, and uh, most of which I'll be using here today. So just leave me the words Nova Color down below if you can't find the link underneath this video. Okay, so while I was chit-chatting away, I did take um, a short break. And what happened was I let it dry, and I came back in and decided to put some mark making on top of it again, just because it was dry and... I like getting some white down now that I've got black down. And on my uh, on my cell phone there, I, I'm watching some video and I, honestly, I don't remember. It's been several months since I recorded this. All right, those are the two colors that I'm using to start off with. And there's one more. So the video that I'm watching, I believe it was about an artist. So uh, kind of like a documentary, but I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, I love to listen to something while I'm creating. And there's my favorite cad yellow. I use pretty much all the time. And I'm gonna be putting in also my other favorite, which is Indian yellow, a warm yellow. All right, so going back to why I've got a video playing, I'm not really watching it, but although I, did glance over on occasion. What I love is when I'm creating, I really love to listen to words because it helps take me out of my own head where I'm not being so judgy about what I'm doing and not, you know, having these um, negative thoughts, you know, bouncing around like, you know, oh, you know, why are you putting down that color? Why'd you put down that mark? Does that even make sense? I learned years ago that if I listen to somebody talking, and that can be through um, video like I'm playing now, or a lot of times I really love to listen to audiobooks 
and also to podcast. So anything where I can engage my brain, my left side of the brain, listening to somebody else talking, and I really get into that, it really frees me up to, to be more creative. And I discovered that years ago, and I swear by it. It works for me. I know it doesn't work for everybody. Some people love to listen to music. Other people like pure silence. So you got to figure out what's going to work for you. And I have discovered that if I listen to somebody talk, and sometimes I even zone out, and I'm not really listening to everything they're saying, but for the most part, I am. I'm very engaged in what is being discussed. That I learned that it just really frees me up to be creative and not to be so judgy, not to have that little devil sitting on my left shoulder questioning everything that I'm doing. And so ever since I discovered that, I love to listen to audiobooks, podcasts, or videos where people are talking. All right, I dived right into this and I am using my cool colors. So I like to divide things up between warm colors and cool colors, and I like to keep things simple. The way that I divide these up is my cool colors are my blues and greens, and purple usually falls into this category. And my warm colors are your pinks, reds, oranges, but yellow I like to use for both cool colors and warm colors because it blends well. And what I mean by that is I don't create mud. And that's one of my ways of keeping my colors crisp and clean is by not, by not cross-contaminating, so to speak. So not taking a warm color with a cool color and making a mud color. Now, there's nothing wrong with mud because it is a neutral, I think, is really important. And you'll see, you know, right there, I've got kind of a neutral color going on. Neutrals are really important when you like to use bright colors because it makes those bright colors stand out even more. But I like to start off with, you know, trying to keep those colors as clean as possible. Clean, crisp, bright, happy um, are the adjectives that I tend to use to, to describe those. All right, so I've got raw umber here. It's a color I normally don't use, but I, I wanna come in with a little bit more of a neutral here. I'm working with somewhat of a limited palette in terms of, you know, I picked a few colors for my cool, and then I'll pick a few colors for my warm as well. I'm not really good at limiting my palette because I love all colors. And as you can see, I mix my colors as I go because I love creating new colors. And that's kind of the exciting part of creating for me. It's not just about what I'm creating. Sometimes it's more about the colors that I create as I'm doing it. And so combining those two together just makes for a um, super happy painting experience for me. As I mentioned before, if you are new to my channel, uh, thank you for being here and truly a, a big welcome to the folks who have been following me and, and you're back again to watch another video with me. I so appreciate you doing that. For the new folks, if you don't know, I am inspired by fields of flowers, and most of my paintings represent my love for fields of flowers. And that can be done in a variety of different ways, and mostly through color and through my mark making. All of my pieces are all about making marks, and those are large marks, they're small marks, there's areas where I fill in between my marks, I cover things up, I bring things back, I add more on top. It's kind of this dance going back and forth of adding, subtracting, adding some more, taking things away and trying to find a composition that excites me, that makes me happy, that brings joy to me. And those are the things that I'm looking for as I create. Now, I like to start with black in the background because I love that depth that it creates, and I don't like to add that at, at the very end as a top layer, although sometimes if I overdo it and I cover too much of my black, I do come back in with some black at the end, and I try to blend that in a bit so that it looks like it's in the background, not floating on top of my piece. 
So that's why I've got a lot of black in the beginning, but as you'll see as we go through this process, a lot of it is going to get covered up. I did speed up this video. However, I do tend to work pretty quickly. I don't like to think too much about what I'm doing, although I have to be honest with you, I've been doing this for many years, and so it kind of comes, you know, it's, it's second nature for me to throw down some colors and, you know, quote unquote, not think about it. But the truth is I've practiced it so much that I don't have to think too much about it. Now I'm working with smaller brushes here. I've got a rigger and I love my rigger because it makes these really thin marks and it's great for lines and circles, but I also kind of abuse it and I use it to fill in as well, which I love that because it's not perfect. You know, I was in Croatia. I just got back from Croatia last week and on this last trip going to Croatia to visit my parents, I brought with me new brushes. I thought, oh, I'm going to bring some new brushes. That's going to be great. And it's funny because I started creating with these new brushes and I noticed that I was being so exact. All right. So here I'm drawing it. I turned my palette around so that I can now bring in some warm colors. So here are my warm colors. All right. So going back to my brushes when I was in Croatia, I created, oh, and I just, um, I held that upside down just so you can see the viscosity of the Nova color paints. They are not heavy body thick, but they've got a nice thickness to it. Uh, they are not fluid, but they're somewhere in between a, a heavy body and a fluid. And this hands a yellow light, not my favorite, and I'm trying to use it up. There's something about it I don't really like, so I'm forcing myself to use it up. And I'm, I'll be blending it in with some other colors. And now I'm bringing back some of my other yellows that I like. Okay, now I'll go back to Croatia. So I brought these new brushes with me, which, you know, they feel great. It's wonderful having these new brushes, but I found that the first few pieces that I created with the new brushes were very tight and I was trying to figure out like what's wrong with me I normally don't don't paint this tight and exact what I mean by that is everything was just the edges were so perfect and I like something a bit more looser and so what I discovered was it was my new brushes they were so perfect that they were making perfect lines and I didn't like that so what I did was I smooshed them down. I put them on my table. Like I have a table in Croatia similar to this one where I pressed it down and I smashed it down several times and it kind of fanned out a bit. And I also left them sitting in water, <laughs> which, you know, you, you normally shouldn't do with paint all over them just because I wanted to abuse them a bit and make them a bit more rough so that when I'm painting with them, they're not making these perfect lines. So that's an example of you've got to use your tools the way that you want to use them, the way you want to create. And if you are buying new ones and you're finding that you're not being loose enough, maybe try smashing them up a bit and smooshing them down and making them a bit more, um, I don't know, I don't even know the right word for it, but um, not having them be so perfect. So give that a try. And like I was saying about my rigor, same thing. I like to paint with it kind of like sideways, use the side of it to paint areas. And what happens is it'll like skip around and bounce around a little bit. And so it doesn't create this perfect coverage because I don't like things to be perfect. I like things to be perfectly imperfect. And that's just me. That's that's the way I like to create. We all have our own uniqueness that we bring to our art through who we are. And that's who I am. You know, I'm very neat and organized in so many aspects of my life. But when I come here to create, I don't like to be neat and perfect. And maybe that's because I am in so many other areas that this is my opportunity to to loosen up and feel a little bit more free. I've come in here with my warm colors, starting to, you know, kind of fill in some areas and also continue to make some marks as well. 
If you like the way that I'm creating and you would like to learn from me, I would love to be a part of your art journey. I've got two online courses, one that I launched last year. It's my signature course. It walks you through everything, including exercises, including my thought process. Like as I'm creating, I am talking to you about what I'm thinking and why I want to do what I'm doing and why I should be covering something up and why, you know, just every step of the way I'm talking, I'm talking out loud for you to hear. And the feedback I've received is people love that. They love hearing, you know, my thought process behind what I'm doing. So um, it's been great to to have that course available out there for you. It's called uh, Fields of Flowers. And the other course that I just launched a couple of months ago, so January of 2024, is a shorter one. I wanted something a lot more affordable for for, for folks, although my full full on course is under $100. My mini course is a concertina art journal. Now, concertina art journal is like an accordion art journal. And I show you how to do that, how to make one. And then I paint one side with you. And then I do the other side off, off camera, but I come back and I show you what I created. But the whole point of that was to keep it about an hour. It's actually an hour and a half. I was trying to keep it shorter, but hard to do. And very affordable. That one is just $37. And for both of those courses, you have unlimited access, which means that go through the course, go through it once, maybe even watch it the first time, and then come back the second time and paint with me or paint with me the first time around. But you can come back whenever you want and you can retake the course as many times as you want, or maybe just segments of the course, depending on you know where you feel like you need a little extra help. And there's a couple of bonus videos with my signature course as well. Now, one of the things that um, people have been loving the shorter course is because, you know, I still talk you through a lot of the process. And although we don't do exercises together, you really get the gist of how I create and how to, you know, separate your colors and how to put down marks and things of that nature. And we do the final mark making together. I mean, we do everything from start to end and it's in real time. So I am talking with you in real time. Um, so, you know, you can see what we're doing and we create that together. And then for the mini course, I also share with you four things that you can do with the, with the accordion art journal that you create. So if you don't want to keep it as an art journal, then I show you several other ways that you can either share those with others or, you know, share them with yourself or keep them for yourself, I should say. Okay. So I'm coming in here with some lighter values. Lighter meaning white is coming in and I'm scratching right into that white because I've got some color underneath there and I love how that shows through. So the one on the left, the piece on the left, you can see the values are very similar. So if we look at a value scale of one to 10, I would say that all those values are somewhere like a four, five, and six. There's nothing that's really light, light, like we, we show here on the piece on the right where I just introduced some white. So I like to bring in values because you want a painting to have that diversity and that, you know, it adds a bit more excitement to the piece and your other colors are going to stand out more when you do that. So now I'm coming in on the left side and again, bringing in a lighter value. We've already got black in there. So we've got that really dark value already. And even the blues, um, if I was to take a photo of this and convert it to a black and white, the black and the blues would really stand out as being a darker value. The other colors, more of a mid, so a kind of a lighter gray. And then the white is going to come in with a really lighter um, not pure white, but it's going to show up a lot lighter. And so sometimes if I'm feeling unsure about a piece, I will take a photo of it and look at the grayscale and see, you know, do I have a good balance of black and white? So what I mean by that is if you look at the one on the right, I've got some light color at the top. I've got some midway down on the left side, and then I've got a big area 
lower right. So that's kind of balancing those lighter areas. So I'm trying to do a little bit of balancing on the one on the left as well. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would so appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. And you know, that really helps me so much because what happens is not only your subscribing really helps me, but if you hit the thumbs up, super, super helps me because what that does is it tells YouTube that you're enjoying this video and the more people that do that, the more they'll serve it up to other artists such as yourself. So you're not just helping me, but you're helping a lot of your other fellow artist friends out there, a lot of whom you don't even know yet, so that um, they will see it show up in their feed. So I just want to say thank you right now if you're hitting that subscribe button and hitting the thumbs up. And then also if you leave me a comment, you know, you could be requesting a link that I'm talking about or just commenting on you know, what I'm creating or asking me questions, that helps me a lot too. And if you have seen my comments on my, on my other videos, then you know I reply to every single comment that is put out there. So whether it's a question or just a comment, I always read those and respond. So thank you in advance if, you've, um, if you're planning to do that or if you have already done that in the past for me. I really appreciate it. I'm coming back in. I was working on my warm colors, but I'm now I'm trying to balance it a bit. So I've come back and I've switched it back to my cool colors. What I love about working on two pieces at one time is if I'm feeling a bit stuck on one, I can jump over to the other one and work on that. And sometimes I work on three pieces at one time. It really gives me the ability to, to go back and forth and also kind of come back to another piece with fresh eyes. When I stare at a piece for too long, I'm really not seeing it anymore. It's just kind of um, blending all together, so to speak. So it's good to take my eyes off of it for a bit. I love creating my own greens and I did that with the phalo turquoise and some yellow. I do have a I think it's a yellow green that's part of Betty's bundle, which is a great green, but I love that green mixed in with another color. It just uh, makes that green a bit more vibrant and fun. All right, I'm just plowing right through here. Working my way around, doing some filling in. I'm trying to stay loose. You know, for me, and I don't know if this happens for you too, you'll have to leave me a comment below if it's true for you too, but man, sometimes I really start to tighten up a little too much. I go over areas one too many times, or I make the edges way too perfect when I'm just trying to stay a bit looser. And for me, it seems to be a regular challenge. I think it's easy to overdo it and, and, make it too perfect and nice and I like to try to keep it just a bit more loose and and fun so let me know in the comments below if you if you have that challenge too and it's not just me so you'll find that I will go over areas several times until I get the color right Meaning, you know, am I happy with that color? Is it working with the rest of the piece? That is not always the case. Sometimes I'll put down a color and it's just not working with the colors that is surrounding it. Or overall, it's not working for the entire piece. And that's where my layering comes in. So I'd like to think of it as not a mistake. You know, no layer of color is a mistake. It actually, if it didn't work, it's actually going to enhance my painting because it's going to add some depth to the piece. A lot of times I don't entirely cover up that, that color that I didn't like. I will come in and I will just leave bits and pieces of it showing. All right, I've got some black here and that's because I want to 
kind of take the black that I had in the beginning and I want to make it more gray. So, so not make it such a solid dark black. And the gray is adding a little bit more character to that, that darker area. The black tends to be a bit more flatter, which sometimes I like. So honest with me, it's just a mood thing. You know, give it a try. If I like it, great. If I don't, that's okay. Now right there, I've got an eraser and I erased some marks that I had made from the previous layer. And that's what I love about making marks is that it's very easy to use a standard eraser and just erase marks that you don't like. So I'm kind of coming towards the end here, semi, not, not quite there yet, but I'm looking now at all the sides to see, okay, am I happy with them? Does it need a little bit more? What does it need? Now, sometimes the very back side of my paintings when I'm working on wood get paint on them and that's perfectly okay with me. I've had some folks ask me about that like do you keep it clean? Do you clean it up afterwards? I don't because I like people to see that this is authentically a original painting and it's not perfectly clean on the back side. I personally like that. It, it makes me feel like you know it's it's not produced at a factory. It's not an assembly line piece of art that was created. It's got some paint on, on the backside too. Continuing with my filling in here. So all through my process, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's all about making marks. So small marks, large marks, you know, here I'm making some smaller dots. I've got large circles, open, what I call open circles or closed circles. So open being, you know, not filled in and then closed circles being filled in circles. And these are all inspired by my love for flowers, fields of flowers, flowers themselves. And all of these marks represent parts of a flower or, or fields or, or some aspect of a field or even fences. I love old fences that are falling down. So that's represented in my artwork. If you are trying to figure out what you love and how to get that to represent in your, how to represent that in your artwork, then just leave the message down below um, that uh, well, uh, I'm going to include the link under the video, but leave me a message um, if you want a um, guide, a free guide that I have. Leave the word guide. Let's do that. Leave the word guide, and I will send you a guide on three things that I figured out that helped me determine what it is that I'm trying to create. And of course, I figured that after the fact, but these are three things that I wish I knew before I finally figured out my style of painting. So I want to share that with you, kind of speed up your process of trying to figure out what you love and how you want to represent that in your artwork. All right, so these pieces dried and I'm coming in with my final mark making. My final mark making tends to be a bit more intentional as opposed to the very beginning or somewhere, you know, in the early stages where I'm doing a lot of just scribbling and not really paying attention to where it lands. This mark making is much more intentional. I'm paying attention to where it's going. Although some of it is scribbles, some of it is not. I like doing this, whoops, we erase that. I like doing this because it kind of adds, you know, it's kind of that icing on the cake. It's, it doesn't, change the painting, so to speak, but it enhances it a bit. And here I'm using a uh, Stabilo Woody and I love it because it's creamy. It's like a crayon. And so I like to rub it out a little bit to make it look more painterly. And notice I left the one on the left, I left those darker blue edges. So I'm not covering the whole thing completely.
So I'm going around checking all my sides, want to make sure that there's something interesting happening on all the sides as well. What I love about the final mark making as well is that if there's um, a color that I really didn't like after I was done with my painting, I can always use like the Stabilo Woody that I've got here and I can add some color back in or, or add a color that I like. And I tend to use a lot of the colors that I've already used in the painting. So you're not going to see something that's really screaming out at you in my final mark making. A lot of it tends to, to blend in or just um, compl complements the colors that I was already using. Here I'm doing a bit of scribbling. I love adding some scribbles. Very subtle. All right, and I'm erasing some of them back. Again, just a regular eraser. All right, I'm ready to sign. So I'm just lining up that other one to give me a place to rest my hand. And I didn't like the way I signed it. See, this is why I sign in pencil because sometimes I just don't like the way I sign it or I sign it crooked. And so I have to redo it. And ever since, um, I started using a pencil. It's been so much easier. Before I used to sign in a um, a pen and it was a paint pen and it was impossible. I had to repaint that area if I messed it up. All right. So quick view of, I should have slowed the section down. Sorry about that. I usually try to remember to do that, but I've got some photos at the very end here as well. But love the sides. Sometimes I love the sides even more than the front side of the painting. There's just so much interesting stuff happening there. Okay, I'm going to show you these photos. Hey, if you're still here, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. Leave me a comment or a question, or if you want one of my links, um, just let me know down below. Thank you for being here. I so appreciate you and I'm wishing you a super fabulous and creative day. Take care.